Many individuals are skeptical of the notion of finding real love through dating apps. A dating app should be a tool for connection, not a portal for our fears. Changing the script begins with taking control of your story and the willingness to put in the effort. Tune in as Emily of Hey Baby Dating App shares the platform's features and how you can find the perfect match for your life. Hello, everybody. Maria Romano here from True Love Knots. I am so excited today. I'm so pumped up because I have a special, special guest, um, Emily, and I'm pronouncing it Lauren Berg. Did I get that right? I just want to make sure I didn't botch your name up. You know, No, you got that right. Um, I use all three of my names, although that often confuses people because people don't always pay attention or read. So I get a lot of being called Lauren, but actually it's Emily Lauren's the middle name. Berg is the last name. Uh-huh. And there you go. You got See? it. Right. And, you know, today I'm so excited to share with um, our listeners and people that view us on YouTube. You know, we're talking about love. I mean, we all know that love is important. And there have been studies that you need love in order to survive. That has been a study. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. Do- Dr. John Bowlby, as a matter of fact, uh, started with that study many, many years ago. So, but you know what? I'm not going to talk too much about the study of love because we all know we're looking for love. We want love and we want to keep love in our life. So mm-hmm. I'm going to cheer on Emily. <laughs> Emily, welcome to True Love Knots. And also just share with us a little bit about who you are. You said you, you used to live in back East, just like me. And now you're on the West coast, not too far from me, a stone throw away. Give us a little bit of background about you and how you got to your journey today. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to sit and chat with you today. Uh, we're not that far away. I'm in Los Angeles. You're in Las Vegas. Uh, we, we grew up not that far from each other as well on the East Coast. So there's always a special connection between East Coasters when we get a chance to talk. And I'm really excited to talk to you uh, about Hey Baby, the dating app of which I'm CEO, and tell you a little bit about how I got here. Um, I was a heavy dating app user. Um, I had been in several long-term relationships, um, but it was a little bit of a commitment phobe. And I think like a lot of us, especially now with dating apps, had this idea that there was always somebody better, something better, just one swipe away. Um, And was really excited to think about how can this be different? Uh, There has to be a way to help people find what they're really looking for. And as exactly you said, keep it there's an element that's missing. There are all of these ways in which people are being delivered opportunities, but no advice, no counseling, no support, no resources around how to build healthy relationships from there. All of the, all of the resources in the world come from this really negative perspective, like here's your problem, here's how you're going to fix it, not from a skills building perspective. And I actually had a totally different career before I got here in chaplaincy and counseling. Um, I actually started out in investment banking, which is like completely weird to think about going from loop to loop to loop. I started out in investment banking, sort of typical New York stereotype there, and had a real call to service um, and thought there's more to this life that I want to be doing and went to divinity school and worked as a chaplain helping people with cancer and at the end of their lives and also people who were incarcerated, um, helping them on their spiritual journeys and brought to them the resources and the support to help them walk paths in their lives towards strength um, rather than coming at things from a problematic perspective. And after doing that for about seven years, I thought that there was a way to incorporate that with my business background and started to do work for social impact companies in the for-profit and nonprofit sector, particularly with big companies like Disney and Snap and HBO um, and Levi's, who all had hearts that they wanted to match with their wallets, and think about how they can solve problems in the world and bring communities together. But from my own experience, on dating apps, looking for relationships, I saw that this was not happening on a community level. There was sort of this uh, inauthentic community that was being built um, on a corporate level and on a a macro level, but it wasn't happening between people. So uh, I was most recently working for a mental health startup, something that's extremely timely. Um, 
And I was recruited for Hey Baby and thought this is an incredible opportunity to bring together all of these aspects for me personally that are so important, building relationships, bringing resources to people, coming from a place of strength, coaching, counseling, but most of all, helping people find and keep love in their lives, particularly because Hey Baby focuses on people who want or have children. And that's people who are at very vulnerable stages in their lives, either coming back into the dating world because they have families and are ready to find new partners or who are hearing the biological clock tick and want to make sure that whoever they are dating is somebody who they can go down the road towards family with. Wow. First of all, I, okay. So we have to back up. We got to unpack this a little bit. So I got, I that I'm was married, a lot. That was a lot. I, I got a married a question. So what was that defining moment for you when you said, I'm going to become a chaplain, I'm going to work with people that are at the end life stages or incarcerate? What happened? What made, what was that, that defining moment? So I was working in investment banking and thought, this is a career I kind of fell into and I'm really good at, but if I could do it all over again, what would be the career I would have? And the answer that I stumbled onto was being a doctor. And so while I was working as the vice president of an investment bank here in Los Angeles, I started to go back to school at night and do the classes you need to do to qualify to become a doctor. And they were really hard, <laughs> really, 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 really hard. And I started to think if this is how hard it is at like stage negative zero on the path to becoming a doctor, and I'm already in my mid thirties, uh, I'm looking at a very long road and I don't know that where I'm going to be in my life is going to align with actually becoming a doctor in this lifetime. So I started to think, what are some other ways that I can be in a medical environment and be helping people? <clears throat> and I had studied, <coughs> excuse me, med I had studied religion in college and always thought that religion was fascinating. I was a yoga and meditation teacher and there's a huge spiritual component to that. And so I started to look at all of the different aspects of patient care and came across chaplaincy and thought this is an opportunity to bring skills and interests I have to have a seat on the medical team and actually be doing the work that I'm most drawn to, not research, not analysis, not being in a lab, not something really clinical, not diagnostics, but in fact, being of service to people when they're at these crisis moments in their lives. And it was like the light bulb went off and I immediately resigned from my job um, and started applying to divinity school. Wow. That, and that's amazing. You're right. Sometimes, listen, going back, we think we want to become something like a doctor and then it kind mm -hmm. of just points us in a different direction. And I think that's great, but you also touched on something else. You know, it's so true. What happens when you start dating, we think that that next swipe is going to be better. Yep. So share with us a little bit, our listeners about that. Well, I think we have become gamified. Everything about our lives has become gamified. There's a reward to all of our behavior, whether it's getting loyalty points and stars when we go to Starbucks, which I just did this morning. Oh, you can't see the cup sort of faded out. Not that I want to give them brand, you know, brand recognition here, but you know, whether it's getting stars at Starbucks because we, you know, we go get our drink um, or we sign up for a 10% off coupon when we go to a website because we think maybe we're going to buy something one day. Everything in our lives has become gamified and, and rewarded. And that is totally true when we get onto dating apps. So dating apps are designed to keep you there. And the way they keep you there is to show you as many candidates as possible and often as many bad candidates as possible to see this idea in your mind that there's always going to be someone else. There's also this idea that um, dating apps are highway robbery. You're going to have to pay uh, a very high level price in order to just be on the dating app in the hopes of finding somebody good in an era when there's no real incentive to commit, particularly after COVID, which I think has blown people's behaviors and expectations in all different, all different directions. There have been um, people who say, I have, I have no time to waste. You know, we certainly see that on the Hey Baby platform. 
with people who are much more serious about dating and we give them the opportunity to comfortably and vulnerably explore that. Uh, and then you see people who are like, the world could end at any moment. Why should I commit to any one person? What should I, why, should, why does that matter? Um, and showing up as, as their worst selves in that. Uh, when I was dating, I actually came onto the dating apps at the end of a very serious relationship where I was engaged. And I wasn't particularly inclined to be very serious. I was dating guys who were many years younger than I was and simultaneously telling myself that I was looking for a relationship and yet dating guys who were very unlikely candidates for relationships. So that combined with the way dating apps are designed set me up to keep swiping. If this guy is really cute and he's really fun, but he's not relationship material, which he obviously was not going to be, if I keep swiping and go on another date, I'll find the guy who's relationship material. But it was actually on me to change my criteria and be a better, more committed, more qualified dater. It wasn't actually on them as the candidates. Interesting, you know, I, because one of the biggest trends as they're talking about now is the apocalypse dating. So mm -hmm. it, it, I'm seeing a lot of that too, but being in the wedding industry, so you were on one end of, end of life and I'm mm -hmm. involved in, as an officiant here in Las Vegas. Now I've only done about 4,000 weddings. Okay. In my career. Oh, only, small, only right. Small, but, oh, compared to a lot of other ministers out here. And I have to tell you over the last few years, um, and especially COVID, we've seen a lot of couples that have met during COVID and or after COVID that are getting married and making commitment. And it's different ages. So, you know, it's interesting what you're seeing at your end, you know, and then what I'm seeing at my end, of course, I'm seeing the end or the beginning of their lives together. So who knows what their journey was like before they got to that point. But Share with us a little bit about, because I think it's important when you talk about the Hey Baby app. And the reason I think it's important is I work with um, men and women that are probably in their 50s, 60s, 70s and above. And, mm -hmm. and that's because of my journey. I was married 35 years, 34 years uh, to uh, a wonderful man. He passed away. And then I was in my 50s. And that's about 10 years ago when I st started this dating journey. I've, found, I've met somebody now, but it, it's been a journey. And what I found, so it's interesting you talk about the biological clock with younger people. As we get into the more mature generation, it's the mortality clock. So you got both ends of the spectrum. That's a working. really interesting point. It's a yeah. really interesting point. Yep. So, that, so tell me about how you got about Hey Baby. I would like you know my listeners to hear about this because I think it's important to have that tell us about, is it an app? What is Hey Baby? Sure. So Hey Baby is an app currently available on the App Store for iPhones, uh, soon to be coming to Android phones as well. We are based um, for the U.S. market. Uh, we're national, but with our strongest presence in California, Texas, and New York, which are three markets that we launched in about two years ago. And we are focused on people who have kids or who want kids. And that's defined a lot of different ways. They could be parents who are solo parents by choice, people who previously have been married and are coming back onto the dating market with kids. They can be people who know they want to have families in their future uh, or people who are actively looking to join an existing family, to step into a family as a step parent, for example. Uh, and the idea behind Hey Baby is that on all the other dating platforms, if you come right out with it and say, I'm looking to get married and have children, or I, I wanna have a family, you are branded a stage five clinger and you are <laughs> totally radioactive, right? Guys who are in their 20s, 30s, sometimes even in their 40s, they are terrified of seeing that. They think you're going to go on one date and the woman is going to be banging down the door, you know, asking for a ring. <laughs> so we've created this really authentic, safe space for people to say, this is who I am and this is what I'm looking for. And on the other side of it, for people who already have kids or families, they tend to get relegated to dating apps that are just for people who have kids. And that treats them as though they're parents only. That doesn't consider them as whole people, which they are, which we believe they are. And not everybody who has children who's looking to date is looking for a substitute parent or looking to make their family whole again. 
they might be looking to date because they're looking to date and they want to be with somebody who understands because they have kids. They might have to cancel at the last minute. They might only get one weekend a month where they don't have their kids. So their time is limited. So we've created a platform that understands that there are these interesting overlapping needs between people who have kids and who don't have kids. And the heart of it, to your point about the mortality clock, is limited time and the fact that there is no other place for them to authentically be themselves and to lead with their intentions. So people who are on the app are at the equivalent of date 10. They're coming out and saying, this is who I am and this is what I want. And there doesn't need to be any posturing or hiding. And their number one priority when they're dating is that they are looking to have families or that they are self-identifying as people who have families or prioritize family. And there isn't any other app that does that. And there's a real aspect of intentionality to how people engage on the app. There's no swiping. And when you like somebody, rather than swiping to show that you like them, you actually hold down the screen on which that person appears and the screen changes color so that there's thoughtfulness that goes into showing that you're selecting somebody. You can't just like do a quick swipe or a quick motion, which comes from this instinctive place as if you are playing a video game and you are shooting at something or clicking on something. This is really taking a moment, pressing the, the screen down, watching it change color and knowing that you're locking in on a choice. You know, I love that because you're right. You use the term swipe and it's like discard. Right? Exactly. Discard away. exactly. And it's like taking it away. And there's something about the touch which I think is great. Who developed this app? Who came up with this concept? So the founders of the app are three dads. Uh, so two, two of them, Chaz McFeely and Digo Doglian, are veterans and, and still experts in the advertising and marketing industry. Mm -hmm. So they have brilliant ideas about creative marketing, branding, and they came up with the idea about four years ago, launched it two years ago. And the third founder is somebody who actually worked with Dico, who has his own advertising agency, also a dad, thought it was such a brilliant idea, wanted to get involved. Um, and I came on two months ago um, as the first hired CEO to kind of build out the product and bring it to the next level. I think that's, you're not in Vegas, you're not in Nevada. We need to do something. <laughs> we need to do something about that, don't you think? <laughs> we, we, we do, we have some users there, just, but we definitely need to scale and amplify there for sure. A absolutely. Really work on that. I, I think you do, because there are many people, you know, it's interesting, even at my age, um, there are men too that I'll meet or women that still have children at home. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're getting ready to go to college, but you know, that's the biggest thing. The biggest challenge is you're right. If you are, you want to meet somebody and right away they hear you have children. They think, Oh, okay. They're, they're dedicated to their children. And right. of course you are. I think that's very important to be dedicated to your children, but at the same token, you need to have a life as well. And mm -hmm. you want to meet, some, you're right, meeting somebody that's on that next, that, that has that, that same mental journey as well, an emotional journey and understands mm -hmm. it. And I think that is so important. So has it, how's it been? I don't know, you know, I'm not going to ask how many users you have or how, I, but I'm happy to tell you sure. that. So I, and so interestingly, when you, again, you talk about the, the lifespan of people and where they are with their with their kids in the, ho the house or not. So we have users who run the gamut of that. We have users who are in their 50s going towards 60 who have kids who've left the house and are interested in trying dating again now that they have the empty nest. But just because the kids aren't in the house doesn't mean they stop being parents, That's right? Exactly that right? They're always dedicated to their kids. So they're maybe open to people uh, who have kids who are teenagers Probably you don't want to date kids, uh, people who have kids who are babies, but it's that same mentality, that same understanding. Uh, we have over 32,000 downloads and 26,000 active users. Seven. Again, across the country, largely in Texas, New York, and uh, New Texas, New York, and California, and continually expanding across the country. And we're seeing with very little advertising and very little marketing that there's a real organic need for, for what we're doing. So, so tell me, when you press down, right? So what mm -hmm. happens? Take me on that journey. Share with us. So, 
Yep. So when you press down, it shows that you have a match and then you have the opportunity to start chatting with the person that you've matched with. But I'll take you to the beginning of the journey, which is that when you download the app, the first thing you do is take the Hey Baby pledge, which is that you're tired of games, you're not a flake, and that you're on the app because you are interested in family. So we are pre-qualifying, so to speak, or self-identifying any user who's coming onto the platform. So everybody who's there is there because they're looking for the same thing. We also have mandatory selfie verification. So we know how serious it is for people who have children to be putting themselves out there into the world. Uh, we have rules about whether or not you can uh, use photos of children in any capacity on the app. And so we require everybody to verify themselves so that you know who you're talking to. You can have some ease and comfort in that on the app. So from the very first point of contact on the app, you are saying who you are and you're saying that you're there for the same reason as everybody else. And then we have the opportunity for people to really self-identify. We don't have a lot of... Uh, filling the boxes of I, I go to the gym, I, um, I'm, this is my religion, I, I, um, I'm a smoker, I'm a non-smoker. Instead, we have more open-ended essays where people can describe themselves even in five words, however they want. And we find that that works really well for helping to people match each other. And people take the opportunity to pick things that are important to them and describe themselves how they want. Do they want to describe themselves as a parent first? Do they want to describe themselves as somebody who's looking for a partner? Do they want to describe themselves by what they do for a living? So again, it's, it's a self-identifying platform, which goes with this theme of creating an authentic space for people to really be who they are. And once you do match with somebody, you have the opportunity to chat and talk with them. Um, and then as with you know, any great connection, hopefully you will want to meet and get off the platform and have, have babies and live happily ever after. <laughs> and, you know, and, 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 and there you go. Well, well okay. We, we all know that having babies are fabulous. I mean, I'm a grandparent, I'm a mom, and but I have to tell you, it sometimes can play havoc on a relationship as well. Although when you're in it for the second time around, maybe, and you decide you want children or, you know, the first time, maybe you have a little bit of a different perspective. But, you know, I have to, I want to go back and you touched on something that when anybody comes onto the app, there's a pledge they read. And it's interesting because what I do with my clients and also whether you're in a relationship or looking is you need to write out like your, 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 your mission statement. Like there's a mission statement mm. for a company. There's, there's obviously what they're doing is that's a pledge. That's a mission statement on, Hey baby. So the same thing, and I call it my love vision statement. <laughs> so that is because that's what you need to have, I think. And, and that's something that's important going forward. So I love that. I love that idea. Um, and, you know, I want to be able to have the, if you can send me the link. Of course. So I can yep. definitely share this with, you know, my listeners and talk about, because I think it's wonderful. I think it's fabulous. Now we need to have something. Okay. So put the bug in your, in your, um, you're, you're those entrepreneurial ears of those marketing people is we want uh, older people to feel, you know, the actually senior, you know, baby boomers and some of the uh, Gen Xers and older than me to feel safe on dating apps. And that has been probably one of the biggest areas that I, when I meet, I'm afraid to date on dating apps. And although, you know, they use somebody like me to help move them along. However, you talk about the biological car clock. So put in their ear that mortality clock. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that as well. You know, and, and we're living longer. Yeah, I think. But I think what's important, no matter what age you are, I, you know, I, I think that it's important to identify who you are, have clarity, have vision and know what you want and not. It, you shouldn't be reluctant to share with what you want or what you want from a relationship. And I think that's the key thing. Gosh, I've so enjoyed. So I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. A couple of hot seat questions and I'm going to have I'm you ready. close with anything you want to share, promote. And this is what this platform is about. It's about you. It's about okay. giving information. All right. So what 
was what's your favorite song that you're just really loving right now? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say it's a song that I'm necessarily like a contemporary song, but there are a few songs that I listen to that just always get me get me pumped up. Uh, one of them is Dancing on My Own by Robin. Mm -hmm. um, another, uh, these are really, now I'm going to like totally age myself. Another one is Freedom 90 by George Michael. Oh, I love George. Um, yeah. Anything by Tame Impala. Actually, it's slightly more contemporary. Um, and I'm just giving you things that are randomly coming off the top of my head. Okay. So, so what was um, the last book you read and what you enjoyed about it? Uh, the last book. This is not the last book I read, but it is recently the last book I read and I'm starting to reread it again because I loved it so much. It's called Less by Andrew Sean Greer. It won the Pulitzer Prize, I think in 2018 or 19. It is so funny and poignant. Um, it's the story of a writer and professor whose ex-boyfriend is getting married. So he decides to avoid the wedding by traveling around the world and his adventures on his travels. And it's just, it's brilliantly funny um, and, and touches on getting older, right? Lost love, um, it, your experience being a stranger in a strange land and then coming back to yourself. Oh, it but, sounds but hilarious and, and really, really fabulous. And all my friends have read it. So we will occasionally like text quotes from it to each other. So and one really last thing, one. What is your, what's your dream vacation? Oh, my dream vacation is South Africa. Ah, great. I've been to Africa, not South Africa, to Kenya, but what? that's great. That is great. So I'd like you to just maybe if you want to either give some advice or share something about Hey Baby. So, so you, 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 thank you. You touched on something really important, which is about what happens when a couple has a kid right? Whether it's in round one or round two of their lives. And part of what we are building out is community. So community for people on the platform to engage with each other in a peer-to-peer, peer-led way. Because looking for your life partner can be very lonely. You're, you're wondering, why are they not texting back? What should I wear on this date? When's the right time to introduce them to my family? And you know, sometimes your friends get really sick of having that conversation with you, <laughs> but it can be very affirming <laughs> to be in a community where you can have that conversation together. So part of what we're building out is that community element, but also a coaching and counseling element that addresses exactly that. How can we, as I mentioned in the beginning, come from a strengths-based perspective to keep couples together for every season of their relationship? It's not just about bringing them together and getting them off the app. It's about giving them the tools and resources to stay in healthy relationships because transitioning into family is huge and scary. And there are lots of people who have kids and the relationship doesn't survive that. And part of our mission is bringing people together to have families or be in families and to stay that way. So we wouldn't be the company that we are if our sole mission was to just unite people. Our entire mission is to be a platform for relationships for all seasons. And you know what? I like that because it's almost like service after the sale. And that's the yep. key thing is you meet somebody. <laughs> well, said. Well, I hate to say it, service after, but it's so true uh, because that's the thing. So, okay, you meet somebody happily ever after. You have baby. That, that's it. That's it. No, you need community. You need some guidance. And I, that is the key, key thing. And sometimes it can't be from family members because they're too subjective. You want objective or somebody that's been through it. So I love, I love that idea of what they're doing. You know, they're hand holding you, but they're hand holding you every step of the way. Step of the way. And I think that's so, and I can remember the days when I was a young mom and it was not easy and not easy keeping a relationship going, let alone taking care of a baby and working. So there are so many different things that come through. And then afterwards you get to people at my life. How do you, you know, even as we get older, how do you blend families together? How do you put, you know, so it's, it's, I love that. I tell them, tell the people that developed the software, your, the investors, they did a great job so far. So I think I am so jazzed because that's exactly what people need. We see too many people 
Okay, they go, they see a coach and then the boom, they drop off and they don't realize it's like going to a hairdresser. You got to go every <laughs> month. Like, you got to cover those roots, right? Right. <laughs> Otherwise the gray just. Oh, no, I won't even go yeah. there. Mm -hmm. I won't even. Well, you know what? Thank you so, so much for this opportunity to share this. I loved everything that you shared with us. I think what you're doing is so informative. It's so necessary and it's progressive and it's, it's really moving the dating world and having relationship world into another level so that we're successful, so that we have marriages and or relationships that stay together instead of they break up. And that's what's important. So, um, Everybody that's listening, I'm going to put the information in the show notes and we'll have um, Emily's contact information as well. And remember, as I always say, make sure you spread love. Have a great day, everybody. And thank you.